parts of the microscope. I mean, ocular lens scanning objective, low power objective, high power objective, oil immersion objective, what the powers that each of those objectives give. And total magnification. I also want to know what the coarse adjustment knob is, the fine adjustment knob, the condenser, the um, iris diaphragm. Okay, all of those parts. And there might be a question, what power do you use when you start using the microscope? And it would have to be the scanning objective. You only use a course adjustment knob with the scanning objective. You never use a course adjustment knob with any of the other objectives, okay? So if it says, what adjustment knob will you use to focus when you're using the high power objective, it would have to be fine adjustment knob, okay? When do you put oil onto your slide? When it's between the high power and the oil immersion objective, okay? So all of that stuff, which you already know. All right, the steps in the gram stain. Crystal violet, I'll take either the 60 seconds or the 30 seconds. Graham's iodine, 60 seconds or 30 seconds. So let me go over the first, what it says in the textbook and then what it says on that review sheet. So 60 seconds in the lab manual, it says 60 <coughs> seconds um, crystal violet, water wash, 60 seconds grams iodine, water wash, um, <clears throat> um, alcohol, 10 to 20 seconds, water wash, and safranin for two minutes. For um, the review sheet, it says crystal violet, 30 seconds, water wash, grams iodine, 30 seconds, water wash, alcohol decolorizing, three times, you do it eight seconds each. If you just put eight seconds, it's wrong. You have to do it three times eight seconds. And you do water washes in between. And then safranin is always the two minutes, okay? All right, now, um, if I ask you an example, what's an example of a gram-negative organism, you would know. You would say Escherichia coli. You would write it correctly with the first letter of the genus capitalized, all the other lowercase, and you will underline it. If you do not do that, I'm taking, it's wrong. It's not even I'm taking points off, it's wrong, because everything is 50 questions, they're only two points each, so you get it wrong. Um, Enterobacter orogenes is another example. Uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa is another example. Um, Proteus vulgaris is another example, okay? Any gram negative. Gram positives, Bacillus megatarium, Bacillus subtilis, Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermidis, Streptococcus pyogenes, okay? So any examples, gram positives or gram negative. Okay, the spore stain, and, oh, and you may have to come up and look in a microscope. It will either be the spore stain or a gram stain, okay? So the spore stain, you'll have red vegetative cells and green spores. For the gram stain, it'll be purple cells or red cells, okay? Steps in the spore stain. You're gonna in the acid fast, it's purple and green? I mean purple it's and It's pink and blue. So the spore stain steps. Boil water, put a piece of bibulous paper over your slide. Saturate it with malachite green and steam for five minutes, keeping moist. Then water wash and then counter stain with safranin for one minute. Okay. As far as the acid fast stain, again, you're going to boil water, you're going to cover the slide with bibulous paper, you're going to saturate with carbol fusion and keep it moist for five minutes, four to five minutes. You're going to do water wash. Uh, then you're going to decolorize with acid alcohol. Don't forget the acid alcohol step, 10 to 20 seconds water wash, and then you counter stain with methylene blue. 
and that's the 30 seconds. Okay, I don't have an example of an acid fast organism, so you won't be able to have to recognize that. Why do we stain a microbe? To see it. Right, to see it and it establishes contrast with the background. Okay, preparing a slide from a broth culture. Do you want us to answer? Sure. All right, from a slide, a loop of broth, smear on slide, air dry, and then heat fix. And then to a slant, you have to put drops of water on a slide, needle a colony onto the slide, mix it, air dry, then heat fix. Good. And why do we heat fix? Prep it, kill it, stick. Right. Okay. Prepare it to, re to receive the stain, killing the organism and adhering it to the slide. All right, why did we streak for isolation every week when we did our unknown? To isolate the colonies. And to make sure it's not contaminated. Right, to ensure a pure culture. Okay. Now, you may have to demonstrate, but I'm not going to incubate plates, so I'm going to have a, a, a circle on a piece of paper. And it's going to say, right? So it's going to say, use the green pen to do the first quadrant. In this case, you need to go like this. <laughs> to do the second quadrant and you're going to have to show that you drag it from the first into the second, use a blue for the third quadrant, and then use a red for the fourth one and there's nothing in there. Okay. <laughs> That's what it has to look like. If you do this, which is what a ton of people were doing for some reason, that's wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So we were already in week four with our streak for unknowns and I was still finding plates that looked like that. That is wrong. So this is the way you want to do it. I wish I had a colored pen, but I don't. Okay, so four components of a carbohydrate fermentation. The first one we have is nutrient broth because we want the organism to grow. The second thing we have is a durum tube, and the durum tube is that little upside down. How do you spell that? D U R H A M. Okay, so that glass tube to capture gas. Okay. The next thing is phenol red. Phenol red makes the carbohydrate fermentation tube red. It's an acid base indicator. If it's neutral or basic, and, and the pH would be basic if the organism was metabolizing uh, proteins to make ATP, the color will be red. If the organism ferments and produces lactic acid, the phenol red will turn yellow. So phenol red is an acid base indicator. It detects the acids of fermentation by turning yellow. Okay, and then the last thing it has is some carbohydrate because we wanna see, does this organism ferment this carbohydrate, glucose? Does it ferment sucrose? Does it ferment mannitol? Does it ferment lactose, okay? And then you'll have- So the fourth one is carbohydrate? Carbohydrate, some okay. carbohydrate, okay? So you'll have tubes and you'll have to pick out which tubes the fermentation occurred in. What tubes did fermentation occur in? The two yellow ones? The two yellow ones, okay? And they happen to have gas production, so you would say fermentation of acid producing acid with gas, okay? So that's what you'll see, okay. My jelly tin is frozen, so I'll tell you 
about that. Sorry? No? Question or no? No, it's the same if you read the acid base. No, no. Red no. means that it's neutral or basic, so no fermentation in the red tubes. If we're talking about carbohydrate fermentation tubes, red is negative. When we did the methyl red test, when we did the VP test, when we did the nitrate test, all of those, the indole test, all of those, the positive was red. Carbohydrate fermentation tube, the positive is, ne it, it, the um, red is negative. So just keep that straight in your head. Okay, all right, so then media, mannitol salt agar, okay. You should know the full name, mannitol salt agar, okay? So um, it isolates halophiles, so it's selective for halophiles, salt-loving organisms, so things like Staphylococcus epidermidis and Staphylococcus aureus will grow on it. And then it's um, differential for mannitol fermentation. It's got acid base. Uh, phenol red in it. So if it turns yellow, fermentation of mannitol occurred and the organism is Staphylococcus aureus. If it stays red, no fermentation of mannitol occurred and it stays red. Okay. All right. EMB. Oh, finally. Okay. We have our EMB, which is selective for gram negatives and differential for lactose fermenters. So the carbohydrate it contains is lactose. For MSA, the carbohydrate is mannitol, okay? So with the EMB plate, if the colonies are... Um, Purple. Bluish and or greenish, metallic green, then it means they're fermenting Manitol, if they're white colonies, they're not fermenting manitol. Okay, so E. coli looks green, that metallic green on the EMB plate. So if I say what's going on in whatever quadrant A, and you have this green metallic sheen, you will say the organism is fermenting lactose. And if I say what organism might that be, you would have to write Escherichia coli, not just E. coli. Okay, as far as our blood auger plates. Will we have the correct spelling on the board? No. Oh, okay. Okay, for the blood auger plates. Okay, actually this side by side now. Okay, so the blood auger plates are only differential. So they differentiate between different hemolytic path um, patterns. Okay, so if you look up through this, you can see clearing on this plate. This is beta hemolysis and no clearing. This is alpha hemolysis. You can see that beta hemolysis, alpha hemolysis. Alpha and beta. <laughs> which one's which? Beta. Beta. The clearing. Alpha. Alpha. have plates, which plate has alpha hemolysis, which plate has beta hemolysis. Beta is full hemolysis, right? And alpha is partial? Yes. Okay. And then you will need to know organisms. So I wrote it out on here. It's italicized, so I didn't underline it because I don't have to because I italicized it. If it says name an organism that's beta hemolytic, you need to write the name of a beta hemolytic organism, write the entire name. <clears throat> Make sure the first letter of the genus is capitalized and you underline the name. <clears throat> okay? 
All right, so you might have named two beta hemolytic organisms, you might have named two alpha hemolytic organisms, you might have named one of each. Okay. McConkey. Okay. McConkey is also selective for gram negative and differential for lactose fermenters. So it's selective and differential in the same way EMB is, but um, so it still contains lactose as a carbohydrate, but it contains um, bile salt and crystal violet, which inhibit the gram negatives. So if you have those pink colonies, it means that it's fermenting lactose. And the more pink, the more voraciously it's fermenting the lactose. Okay. And then PEA, phenylethanol agar is only selective for gram positives. So only the gram positives will go because the phenylethanol inhibits the gram negative growth. Okay. All right, so the median organism, basically the enzyme substrate product. So these are fair game. So I'm gonna show you an example of media and I can ask you what's the substrate, what's the product, if there's a carbohydrate or protein source, okay? So let's go through this, sim media, okay? So I have sim media when we're talking about the substrate and product, we're talking about this um, black precipitate, which is showing hydrogen sulfide. So hydrogen sulfide and pyruvic acid is the product. The substrate was the amino acid cysteine. And then the enzyme is sometimes called cysteinase. It's not cysteine desulfurase? Some, yeah, sometimes it's called the cysteine desulfurase, sometimes it's called cysteinase. <clears throat> okay, well, so if you see this and I say what media is it, you would have to know it was sim and the black precipitate is the dead giveaway. So I won't just give you this because this could be gelatin. Right? So I'll give you both of them. If you see the black precipitate, you know that it's sim. And then they'll be lettered, like which tube is negative, you know, what, what's the name of the enzyme we're looking for, or which tube is positive, what's the name of the product that we're looking for, okay? So any of those questions, but you have to be able to identify it by looking at this and then the rest of the answers are gonna be right from this table, okay? All right. All right, the TSA and Staph aureus, so that is really for the catalase test. So I don't know if this, I do in peroxide. So you'll have a slide. And that'll either be a slant or a plate. have a slant, but it, I might have a plate, and you'll take a loop of the organism, and you'll mix it with the hydrogen peroxide, and if you see the bubbles, then it's positive, so you can see the bubbles in the loop. Okay, I'm going to make a mess if I carry this around, but you can see, so there'll be a loop there, so you can mix it around and see if the bubbles if you see the bubble, okay? So the enzyme that we're looking for is catalase. The substrate is hydrogen peroxide, so that's H2O2. The product is water and oxygen. The oxygen bubbles are what you see. Okay, so the positive result is bubbles. Okay, spirit blue, okay. With spirit blue, when you have blue colonies, then that's positive, okay. Blue colonies is positive. 
I'm going to show you the one with the blue ponies and not the hay one. Okay. The blue is positive. The blue growth is positive. What does the other one look like? Yeah, so you would have white colonies. Okay. This one, it looks like it has white colonies, but if you look to the halo, the organism I had on here is actually also um, going to metabolize triglycerides. So with the spirit blue, the enzyme is lipase that we're looking at. The substrate is triglycerides. And the product is glycerol and fatty acids. So the substrate is in lipid, like it says on the thing? Oh, we'll try to Oh, wow. That Never mind. Forget it. Yes. <laughs> okay. And then in the positive results are blue colonies. Okay. And you can leave the last one. Okay. I'm going to come back to gelatin again because my... Oh, no. It's good. Okay. So the gelatin you'll see multiple tubes, okay? This one's negative because it didn't liquefy and these two are positive. So liquefaction means right, positive. Right, means it's positive. So the substrate is gelatin, which is a protein, negative, and these two are positive, okay? Negative, these two are positive, okay? So liquefaction means it's positive, this is negative, okay? Okay, and again, I'll give you multiple tubes, and that way you can say, oh yeah, it's gelatin, because it's liquid. Um, the, so the enzyme is gelatinase. The substrate is gelatin, which is a protein, and the product are amino acids. The positive result is liquefaction. The enzyme is gelatinase. Gelatinase, and the substrate gelatin. is gelatin. Thank you. The the product you mean? The product is amino acids. Amino acids. Indicator is liquidation, and the protein source is gelatin. Correct. Correct. All right. Okay. Milk agar, okay, so it'll either be one plate or two separate plates. A clear zone around means that the organism broke down the casein. So the protein that we're looking at is casein. This one's positive, this one's negative. So positive, right? Clear zone. Positive. Clear zone is positive. Okay, so the enzyme is caseinase. The substrate is casein, which is a protein that's found in milk. And since it's a protein, when we break it down, it's going to be broken down into amino acids. That's the product. The indicator of positive result is um, clearing around the colony. Okay, so, and the protein is casein. Gaga is simon citrate. Okay, so you should know that this is simon citrate, right? The blue tube is positive, the green tube is negative. Okay, simon citrate, we're looking at citrates, so we want to see if the organism can use citrate as its sole carbon source. So um, citrate, citrate or citric acid <coughs> is substrate, citrates is the enzyme, and it would make organic carbon. So it would make proteins from that carbon or carbohydrates from that carbon. Okay, so the blue tube is positive. Then we have urea, okay? So the urea broth, um, we're looking to see if the organism can take urea, which is the substrate, and break it down into ammonia. Okay, that's ammonia is the product, and the enzyme is urease. 
So if you have an orangey tube, that's negative. The hot pink tube is positive. Okay. Okay, and then the triptone broth. Here we go. Okay, the triptone broth. I want to know if the organism. Yeah, I probably shouldn't use these, but I just want to show you what it looks like. Where's my? So with the tryptone broth, the enzyme is tryptophan A's. The substrate is tryptophan. And the product is indole and pyruvic acid. Okay, the reagent is either COVAX reagent or indole reagent. When you see a red ring on top, that indicates positive. If there's no red ring, you see how there's a red ring on top? No red ring means it's negative. No red ring, no red ring, okay? Red ring is positive, no red ring is negative. Let me see the ring. No red ring. Okay. Okay. Make new ones. Okay. So when you come in, you're going to work your way around. I have 18 stations, so everyone's going to start at a station. You'll get a piece of paper that you're going to carry with you. There'll be an index card and the questions will be on the index card at the station. So you may come in and you have to start writing your answers at number 24, okay? I'll circle the number that you start writing your answers on the um, answer sheet at that station. And then on the index card, it will tell you where to go next. You cannot go to the next station until everybody, so everybody moves at the same time, okay? I don't have a time for it. Um, so for like A and P, I always say you have two minutes and then you have one minute the second time around. For micro, I don't do that because some of the stations take longer than others. So what I normally do is there's two stations that people always take longer at, and I look and I see when they're ready, then everybody moves. So you might be at a station where it just says, what media is this and which tube is positive, and you have it all answered. Or what media is this, what's the enzyme, and you have, your answer's done right away, and you're standing there, standing there, standing there. The reason I do it like that is because the one or two stations where it takes a long time, I always look to that before you go to the next station. Generally, people only need to go around once. If you need to go around the second time, just give me a chance to collect papers that people want to get out of here, and then we can set it up where people go around a second time. Okay. okay. Any questions? So we're not going to be just sitting down. We're going to be walking around the whole time. Correct. Okay. But you're not going to walk around until I well, tell you. Yes. You okay. Oh, no. <laughs> just want to clarify. All right. Are we ready? Yeah. This is, no. you, I'm ready to get it over yeah, with. Yeah, but you've been doing it all semester, so, yeah, you know, I just over. wanted to show you exactly what it's going to look like, you know. And, and you'll be at the station, so any of the question, any substrate, enzyme, product questions, those are fair game. So basically, and which tube or which plate is positive, you know, what's going on here, and you have to say there's lactose fermentation, or there's mannitol fermentation, or there's no mannitol fermentation, okay? Beta hemolysis, and we have Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pyogenes that are beta hemolytic, 
alpha hemolytic organisms are uh, Staphylococcus epidermidis and Streptococcus pneumoniae. All right? Okay. So if you handed in your unknown and you're all good, you are free to go.